Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. This is Julian, and I am here with you guys with another exciting interview with another creative personality, a very special guest, Susan Turley. Hello, hey. Susan. Hello, hello. <laughs> she is with the Art Barn, and we are here going to be chatting, hanging out with her, just asking her, you know, just a little bit about herself, her business, and just, you know, whatever she wants to share with us. <laughs> so I'm Susan from the Art Barn Studios here in California, and I have been doing this Art Barn art paint party business for about, it's close to 10 years now. Wow. And I started this business by myself. Like, the people did paint parties, and I have a ton of friends that said, you got to do it. And I started it by myself, thinking I would just do it once or twice. Um, but my husband had just passed away. I had two small boys and God just took this and he just built this business. I didn't, I didn't even do it. I feel like I still am trying to keep up, but I've been doing this forever, but I recently am hooking up with people like Julian and a lot of other people. And it's so much more fun with all of you. It's way more fun than me by myself. Same for <laughs> you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. As far as your business the the studios it looks like you have a huge venue so i'm always intrigued to see like what you know where everything's at <laughs> and uh, how so big is I your can, space after this is over i can pan everything and show okay, you okay that'd be but cool. to do that now will make everyone dizzy um but <laughs> when about seven years ago i came and did a paint party at this house and it was falling down there were bars on the windows the screens were flying out the out the windows like it was dirt in the yard. It was, it was a scary little place, but I walked into this room that I'm in right now and it's a, it's a game play room with an indoor swimming pool. What? I know. And so the room itself, so the swimming pool is ginormous and then the, the room attached to it is just as big or bigger. And I, there's nothing on the walls in here. And I walked into this room and my mind went, Oh my gosh, I didn't see the rest of the house. I just thought, I need to live here. So I told the gal who had, who had come, I said, I need to live here. She's like, well, I live here. <laughs> I said, well, if you ever don't live here, let me know. And so she was renting. I contacted the owner and I seriously, you remember I told about the God thing. I got this house for 0% down. He's carrying the note with zero interest. Wow. Yeah. So I didn't, I never saw the other, the, the rest of the house, but before my husband passed away, he rehabbed homes. Uh -huh. So I could, I did a checklist. It's like, okay, I don't have to address that yet. I'll just close that door. I don't have to do this. And how much is this going to cost? And honestly, she's like, the septic tank needs to be taken care of. That's $10,000. I'm like, okay. And so we mm -hmm. got in here, the septic tank just needed to be cleaned out. There was a toilet in the bathtub. Like the septic was backing up. Like the house was horrible, horrible, but it just, I just put lipstick on this pig and it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so where in California are you? I'm in Southern California, about 40 miles from Palm Springs. Okay. Yeah, yeah, pretty awesome. close to Palm Springs. So is it an actual barn or it's just the name? No, I painted the exterior of the house um, a barn color and I put um, faux barn doors on the garage doors. And then I have I have an acre. So there's um, they pull into the back and park in the back. Okay. And uh, the, there's wood, the, whoever lived here in the 70s put all wood, like solid wood beams and stuff on the ceiling. It looks a little barn-esque. Yeah. And as you pull into the property, there's goats. People have goats. And uh, <laughs> I have chickens on the property. And so it's kind of barny. Yeah. Yeah. I like, I like that. I like that. Yeah. It's, you know, you just took the theme. And because if you look inside, it looks like a barn. <laughs> well, so the first one that I did, I was in a 900 square foot home because we lost our house and our property and we lost everything when my husband passed. And I was in a 900 square foot home with a separate um, attached um, single car garage. And my landlady, like she said, you can, you can run a business from there. And I said, well, can I paint? And the reason I did it at the art barn seriously is because I had no money. I couldn't afford to make something look pretty and barns can be gross, right? Right. I mean, and yeah. falling apart. <laughs> so I went with that theme. Grouchy. I had no money. <laughs> and so she would let me paint the exterior of the, the, garage to look like a barn and I painted the door to look to look like it had you know the yeah. trim on and um I I put a drape uh, drop cloths where my washer and dryer were and yeah that's how we started <laughs> that's so creative <laughs> yeah so now so, I, w I want to know about you like how did you get into into painting and like how long ago or you know whatever yeah my mom was an artist 
um, uh -huh. she wasn't like, she just liked to do art and she always had us do arts and crafts when we were growing up. Um, when I was in middle school, um, elementary school, high school, I did the backdrops for school plays and stuff like that. Um, I started doing backdrops for the, the kids school plays when they were in elementary school. Oh, I mean. And then the school started hiring me to do their after school art programs. Um, especially after my husband passed away, they all like jumped on the bandwagon and take care of us. I mean, they were amazing amazing and it just was what well and before that I was the um, art director for an art academy which I did not like I don't like administration I don't like te teaching a structure a curriculum I'm not that girl so um, it was really confining so it, it all just it's a domino effect it all just took off yeah that's awesome what's been the biggest challenge since you you know since you started the studio um that all the tech stuff, I don't like it. I don't like the admin stuff. If you saw, I don't know, there's people who, who get on Excel and spreadsheets and all that, and I don't do that. I have a sheet that I put the people's information on, and then when that party's done, I just put it off to the side, and then when it's paid, I put it over. I don't do anything on the, I hate all of that stuff. Yeah. I just got, so Julie, I don't know if you know, I just got the sublimation printer and the heat press. Uh -huh. I have to learn how to use it. <laughs> Ah. I just want somebody to come show me because we're all so visual. It's like, just right. show me and I've got it. But now yeah. I have to watch the TV and yeah, yeah. that's my show. I still haven't gotten into that. Is that just so, so you don't have to sketch by hand? Yes, because I do like 700 canvas at a time. Mm -hmm. And so the drawing doesn't take me that long. It takes me 30 seconds, uh, maybe 45 seconds if it's a more involved uh, painting. So it doesn't take that long. But if this can cut my time in half with 700 canvas at a time, like I did thousands of kids during, you know, during the busy end of the school year, if that can save me 50% of my time, it's yeah. worth it. Yeah. I think, I mean, a, a little more expensive route also would be uh, the Glowforge. I think the Glowforge does, yes. does a bunch I've seen of those for when you hold those up to the light, there's pinholes in there. Like it burns oh, through a little bit. Yeah, you have to really? be really careful. I have a local gal who has a Glowforge and she would, she would um, laser them for me. She would uh -huh. totally laser for me, but it's, she's going to charge me a dollar a canvas to do it. So I buy the canvas. I give it to her. She, she does them charges me a dollar and I could charge my clients an extra dollar, but that I have downtime. I know it doesn't seem like it, but yeah. so if I have 700, an order of 700 canvases and I would pay her $700, it's like, I'll just do it and keep the 700 yeah. bucks. <laughs> yeah, that's why we do what we do, right? <laughs> because I, I have time. I mean, if right. it comes to the point where I don't want to anymore, then that's that's definitely a, a, a thing I can do. But this is my next my next step to see. Yeah, this is going to save me some time, and yeah, that's awesome. Well, yeah. another question I like to uh, ask is, um, what has been? I like to call it the ghost challenge. Something that when you started you thought it was going to be like, you know, like a big challenge because all of us as entrepreneurs and, you know, go-getters, we have like these ideas and um, we fear a certain thing that when it comes to it, it's like, oh, it wasn't that big of a deal type of thing. Do you have anything like that that you can think of? I really, I'm not that person. Like I just, I, I bob and weave and shift and adjust pretty good. Um, oh, I don't have a lot of the only thing is when I first started, like everybody else is when people would cancel a party or people wouldn't sign up for a party. In my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm never gonna have another paint party. This isn't gonna work <laughs> out. Nobody's gonna ever come here again. And then the next week I'd be like, like slam busy. I'm at the point now when they cancel, I'm like, oh, thank God. <laughs> you know? I'm so grateful that they canceled because right. I'm so busy. But um, I talk to people and I have to be really be mindful of that because I tend to just blow off their their, oh, I can't get people's butts in the seats. It's like, oh, it'll come. You know, I, I tend to um, downplay it and I have to step back and remember that awful feeling of I'm a failure. This isn't going to work. And who wants to do this every, you know, all the time? So that's, that's, that's the challenge. I follow your page because I love you everything do. you do. And I love it. every time I see you're like doing, like you mentioned, hundreds of art kids and uh, like a bunch, like a few dozens, um, painters per school because you go to a lot of schools mm -hmm. so you have yeah. 40 70 sometimes even 100 kids and stuff yeah. right um i get I, I i'm sure that just as i'm curious there's going to be other people that are that are curious about how do you go about for example the art kids how do you are there any tips 
that you could share that, you know, just for those who are wanting to get into um, selling our kids, you know, any tips or tricks that you, that you might want to share? You mean organizational or just getting the, the work done or what? Yeah. Like how did you start, for example, all these art kits that you sell, are they for schools or are they for a specific? Um, they're, they're mostly schools or they're schools. for the, the local reservations or they're for um, team building groups, um, but mostly schools. Yeah. And I started with one school and people look at what I do and they think, I want to be just like her. I'm like, well, do you have $10,000 sitting around to buy all the supplies, first of all? And wait around for 30, 60 days for their purchase order to pay out. Like, you don't want to start off with just like this. You want to start right. off and figure it out. So I started with one school. And then the next year was three schools. And then I've been doing this for 10 years. So now I am so busy. That's <laughs> I'm awesome. I'm so busy. Yeah. So, and when it gets to that point, I do have people sometimes come in and help me package the kits mm -hmm. while I'm drawing. So I'm drawing kits, I'm doing 20 at a time and passing them over and they're packaging them. So we have a little assembly line going on. So was there a point that you had to go out and search for people to buy your kits or has it always been, they come to you? They come to me because, because I, go ahead. You mentioned earlier, was it because of your previous uh, background? You said you were involved in in schools and stuff like that? Yeah, that did help. That did help. And I have told many people to volunteer as much as they can. Um, they have music and um, arts appreciation nights. And so I would go volunteer. Okay. But most of those people were already my friends. I had I had like a shortcut cheater thing is that my boys were in um, baseball for years and they were they were good at baseball. And so everybody knew who we were. And then um, so when I started this, People are like, yeah, I know, you know, they know me, they know me. So that was, it wasn't, I went, I didn't do cold calling. I didn't go out cold. I'm, I'm local in the area forever. Um, so I can see where it might be harder for some people that are not involved with their church or anything, but it can be done. All it takes is one or two people that are very excited about what you're doing and they tend to promote your business. Okay. So if you take care of your people, those people promote your business and they have more credibility than you do trying to sell, 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 sell. Definitely. So, it just takes time. I've been doing this for 10 years. So it's, you would say it's more about relationships than, than Definitely. actually going out and selling. It's all about relationships. It's yeah. all about relationships. For the, I met, and when you posted that day that when you, when they go on people's sites or I post, I don't even remember, but if you don't see someone's face or their name, you don't, I click out of there. I'm like, who is this? I don't, I don't have right. any connectability. It's not because I'm ear. It's like, there's no connectability. So that's why I changed. I followed Jennifer Allwood forever. You know who she is. That uh, she used to do the magic brush. Anyway, she um, she's like people need to see your face and your name. And so in my business name on my Facebook, it's the Art Barn Studios with Susan Turley. Yep. Because I've gotten on people's pages where you can see their face. They do lives and everything, but they never mention their name. Like it's like it's very disconnecting. Definitely. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree with you. I was just watching this uh, TikTok thing. This marketing lady I follow, um, she was she was saying exactly that. Um, uh, you know, this was about short short form videos and stuff, saying how like yes, you can have like a very very juicy uh, video, like informational, or you know, you can be offering like great content. But if they don't see your face or no, or you tell them who you are and what you do. They might think it's interesting, but they not they will not take you serious. Not not as serious as you want them to. No connection. It's not. They, yeah, they like what you do, but they they're looking for connection. There's so many people yeah. out there doing stuff. But I do tell I have memberships and I do tell them start off. If you're afraid, start off just showing your hands. Yep. But talk to your people, like tell them who you are, whatever. Start off with just your hands uh, because you have to build up. Some people just can't just jump on the screen. It's like. Because the first time I did a, a live or something, I was upside down and backwards or something. <laughs> I, just, I just do it afraid. I'm just like, okay. And they like those the best anyway. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So you have, um, let's talk about, you mentioned memberships. You have some of the programs you offer. You offer, of course, in-person in, in classes, of yeah. course. And then you have like uh, online memberships for, for people that want to learn how to paint. Right. I have three memberships. I have one for Kids Online Art Studio, and they get two complete paint kits every month and step-by-step -step video links and a private Facebook group. I have the same thing for adults, and then I have the one for the Kids Art for Business, where I do what you do, where I provide paintings for businesses like us for us to, use, to have license to use. 
That's awesome. And how did you, um, did you teach yourself how to start, for example, like the, uh, the did hey, you get inspiration from somewhere me? else? Steve McLaren, I've taken all the classes. Like I can <laughs> do this all by myself. Like I'm an information junkie, yeah. seriously, but I'm not really good at follow through. Like I get enough to get going to do it. And then I just forget to do the follow up. And so one of my biggest things I'm going to be working on is to do um, the email campaigns because I, I don't like that end of it. So I tend to avoid it. I like this. I'm like, hi, this is Susan. Hey, yeah. I like that part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. It, email marketing is super important. And uh, I know if you can get into that. Awesome. That'd be really good for your business as well. Um, yeah, well, this is awesome. I'm having a blast with you. And um, <laughs> you're always uh, t tell us about your fall or winter. Do you have something exciting coming up? So I'm not I, okay. So I'm not a planner. I fly by the seat of my pants. I just go to the next thing. So I'm not a good um, business coach. I am not a business coach because <laughs> I just, I just, I, I'm in Hobby Lobby. I see what the trends are. I, you know, I'm, I do on point things. There's a video that I saw of some lady making something out of some books and stuff. And so I'll do that live just to get engagement. So I'm like you, we use each other and, and so that we don't have to spend so much time doing the, the creating of the things. Cause we have to have content all the time. Right. We have to have new things all the time. So I focus on the kids. I pull from licensing from other people, from you. And um, that's how it works. I just go like, okay, fall is coming up. So I have paintings that I want to give to you guys, to people in my group, but it's not fall paintings. So I have to deck those, put them on a shelf and then start doing fall stuff. So I just, I've been doing this maybe a while, but I just generally follow Hobby Lobby. <laughs> That's probably why <laughs> I like you. I'm kind of like that too. I just go with the flow, whatever's happening. <laughs> uh -huh. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay. Not a business coach, no. <laughs> awesome. Well, um, yeah, so if you, if you guys are watching this, whoever's watching, definitely go and check her out. She is the live stream queen. She's always <laughs> live streaming and her live streams are very interesting. I always love popping in and saying hello. And, and I don't know how you paint upside down, <laughs> but that's awesome. <laughs> I do because I'm just painting shapes. You guys think I'm painting a Highland cow or something. I'm, I'm just painting a shape. So you can right. do it. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. I'd like to ask you any word of advice. I kind of, I kind of like to interview artists or creatives who are uh, running a studio for the most uh -huh. part. Because yeah. I, I, you know, I have a studio, so I kind of, you know, just to create right. that connection. Um, is there any word of advice that you would like to give uh, for anyone who runs a studio or wants to run a studio? Um, I. When I about several years ago, I looked into renting a studio downtown and you have to know your personality because I did not want to be there all day long every day. I didn't want to be available to people whenever because that wasn't utilizing my time. Um, and this I had a studio at my house before, which was really small. I could only fit 16 people in there. It was just a single car garage. This studio is at my house. Like it's the, that's my living room, like sliding glass. That's my dream. <laughs> so I, you're lucky I have shoes on. You still have to tell me I have slippers on. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I, I don't, I, then I checked into the overhead and I would have to work a whole week to pay the overhead. And I didn't want to do that. Yeah. So you, if it's your dream and your passion, do it. You, but you just have to know your personality. If that's, if that's what you want, then that's what you need to do. This, I, it's like, if I, if I don't want to work, this doesn't have to be open. People can't drop by 24 seven. They can't. Um, yeah. So they have to call and make reservations. Um, this has turned into a factory more than uh, in-person paint parties because of all the kits that I make. And so when I do have in-person parties, I have to actually literally clean, clean up. up my whole art barn. <laughs> Remember, sometimes I just carry the tables back behind the partition where the swimming pool is and then move them back because um, I have to put it right back so I can get back to it the next day. So I, te I have tended to shift to doing outside paint parties. Like I'm doing one this weekend up at outside at um, Snowline Orchards, which is an apple orchard and raspberry. So I do outside events and then this is my factory, but I will clear it up for paint parties. Yeah. But you have to, you have to realize the overhead. You have to realize the time you have to, you have to be there. Right. You have to be there. I didn't want to. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I, I agree with you. There was um, one of the members 
was um, asking for advice. She had three different locations that she wanted to rent a studio in. And there was one in like, like right in downtown. They all had its pros and cons, but yeah. um, it, there was one in right in downtown, the area where she was in. There was another one kind of like off downtown and another one kind of like in the ghetto of yeah. her, you know, her, her area. So um, that's kind of like what you were saying. I kind of gave her the, uh, the advice because what we have, the studio that we have is not like, a, it's not like a restaurant that you're driving by and are like, oh, um, you know, tacos, that looks great. Let me pop in and do some tacos. No, yeah. like people have to plan ahead to come in and stuff. So really being in like a busy, in a busy area, you don't really, you get exposure, but not like, you know, at that moment, like people need yeah. to plan ahead to come in. This so. is the exposure right here. This is the exposure because I live way far away from anything. I'm down a dirt road. There's no real street sign. Like you have to want to come here. Right. So, and so people will come here, you know, I send them a little map, but it's, I'm in where the goats are. Like, so <laughs> I don't, to, I have sometimes so when I bought this house, I thought, oh, I like to get up in the morning in my pajamas and go outside and water my plants and stuff. No, people would pull up just to check and see what this was all about. So I had to start getting dressed every day. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you can be way off the beaten path and people will come. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's basically that's basically what I told her. I, I, I didn't recommend the, the one in the ghetto because, you know, whatever. No. But, but just one off downtown and you actually better that area as well. You know, if it wasn't that good of an area, right. but you being there, you, you better it. And, but yeah, yeah, I to totally agree with you. Um, is there any, any last words you like to add? Yeah, just keep going. Like there's going to be days when you think this isn't working. Even, even today I have parties that cancel. I have um, like when I go do a, a, a nightclub or a bar or something and they don't promote, I'm promoting, they don't promote and, and nothing happens and, and we have to cancel the event. It's, it at first it's really frustrating but yeah. you get you get to a point where you're familiar with how things work yeah and you can't make people be who they aren't mm -hmm. and so yeah. if they're not going to work it then you just stop working with them or you just know okay we'll book this but it may or may not happen mm -hmm. so you just have to put the time in put the years in you just have to build on what you know and, and do it your way because you'll be happier awesome all right. Well, thank you so much, Susan. I really appreciate you taking the time and just sharing your, your wisdom and your knowledge with us. And, um, well, we'll see you on, on the next one online. I love when you pop on my lives, pop by all the time. I love it. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> all, all right. right. Well, thanks take so it much. easy. All right. Bye guys. Thank you for Bye. watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.